After the Enclave's destruction, the refugees of Arroyo and Vault 13 resettled, building a new community with the aid of the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. Finding themselves hundreds of miles from their vault, the members of Vault 13 chose to join the villagers in establishing a new community, and their technical expertise, combined with the villagers' survival skills, allowed the new settlement to grow and prosper. Two generations of the same bloodline were reunited, and their savior, the Chosen One, became Elder, presiding over the village in the years to come. Arroyo's Elder lived for many years after the destruction of the Enclave. She was pleased that the ancient separation between Vault 13 and the Vault Dweller had been reconciled, and many were the times she told you that she wished the Vault Dweller were alive to have seen the reconciliation take place. The Elder passed away in her sleep, certain that the safety of your new village had been secured and was now flourishing. Many of the older Arroyo residents believe that she now lives in the Vault of the Sky, telling the Vault Dwellers of your brave deeds. Relations between the Slags and the residents of Modoc flourished. Between the two peoples, Modoc prospered and became a major farming community, supplying all the outlying regions with food. Metzger's business in the slave trade soon faded with the removal of the Mordino family. The den continued to attract criminals, and Metzger's business practices delved further into drugs and prostitution. The den soon became a rallying point and a safe haven for raiders. The correspondence between NCR and Vault City continued, and a few years after the destruction of the Enclave, Roger Weston assumed the head of the NCR Council. He immediately set limits for NCR's expansion north, and in a landmark settlement, passed an amendment that formally recognized Vault City's independence. Shortly after this settlement, Weston suffered a heart attack and retired from politics. He moved north to Vault City for medical treatment and eventually married Joanne Lynette in the following year. Less than a month after the Enclave's destruction, a mob war broke out in New Reno streets. The Wrights, armed with an arsenal of weaponry that dated back to the pre-war years, leveled the casinos of the other families with rocket launchers. The mob war was clocked as lasting a little over 43 minutes, and when the smoke cleared, half of New Reno had been demolished. To this day, it is commonly taught that the Wright family were the founders of New Reno. Though the Wright family never completely recovered from Richard's death, the knowledge that their killer had been brought to justice eased their troubled sleep. Myron died less than a year after the defeat of the Enclave, stabbed by a jet addict while drinking in the den. His discovery of jet was quickly forgotten, and now there is no one who remembers his name. Optimizing Gecko's reactor created a power surplus in Gecko. The Vault City Council, unable to expand because of their limited power supply, yielded to internal pressure and was forced to take over Gecko to control the reactor. The peaceful ghouls of Gecko became slaves and spent the rest of their lives serving Vault City. You still hear mention of Harold from time to time. Apparently, the tree growing from his head has gotten larger. And if rumors are to be believed, fruit is growing from it. The seeds are said to be remarkably tough, and several of them have taken root even in the most barren stretches of the wasteland. After Doc Johnson helped treat the miners during the Great Jet Scare, the citizens of Vault City voted Doc Johnson into the mayor's seat. Under the doctor's patient hand, Redding forged closer ties with Vault City until some years later, Vault City annexed Reading, granting Vault City's citizenship to only 10% of Reading's population. With the destruction of the conspiracy to destroy the mutants, Broken Hills began to thrive. Then, the uranium ran out. The city, having lost its sole reason for existing, slowly dispersed. The residents carried their riches with them, leaving the place a windswept, desolate ghost town. A few holdouts remained, attempting to eke out a pathetic existence, but eventually, they too disappeared. Inspired by your example, 
Marcus eventually traveled across the Great Mountains to the east, searching for other refugees from the Master's army. You never heard from him again. The failure of diplomacy at Vault 15 slowed the New California Republic's growth into the north. Embarrassed by the failure, President Tandy was replaced by Roger Weston. When the new government finally returned to Vault 15, they found nothing but a ghost town. The squatters of Vault 15 continued their meaningless, non-productive lives. No one noticed when the desert wastes finally claimed the squat. With your aid, the Death Claws of Vault 13 became a thriving community. When the Vault could no longer hold their numbers, a peaceful campaign of expansion was launched to claim the surrounding lands. The Shi flourished, creating a botanical scourge on the radiation surrounding their beloved town. Though this vine could not grow in other soils, the Shi took care to nourish it in their lands. They continued to grow in strength and prominence, forming the basis of a new empire. The scientists grew tired of waiting for the Star Father to come for them or provide the fuel they needed. Using a cheap derivative fuel, they launched an abortive effort to reach the stars themselves. Their shuttle exploded moments after takeoff. As for the tanker vagrants, well, as vagrants do, they drifted on. The destruction of the Enclave erased all trace of President Richardson from history. Now the title of President is used simply as a boogeyman to frighten children. Yep. What you be need? You have your army. Don't need we and I.
word of your brave deed has traveled quickly. Is it true? Was the government still waging the war? How callous. How cruel. Were they not aware of the community we had built here? That may be a valid point. Next time we should make a stronger effort to find these remnants of the government and ally ourselves with them. I hear they have great power armor. Please, call me Lynette.